Yeah, Lori. Lori, you had something to say? Yeah, hi, hi everybody. Uh, yeah, I absolutely understand and wholeheartedly believe as a registered professional planner myself that the public process is integral in making decisions related to Planning Act applications. And so this meeting should be open and should have uh, all accessibility uh, to members of the public. However, I want to uh, remind council that tonight as uh, the date I look at my um, screen is September 8th, the decision-making um, meeting is September 21st. So alternatively, uh, what we could do is um, post the recording to a YouTube. We could also uh, take in comments over the phone, through email, uh, in person. Uh, we can share information that we haven't um, shared. We can even um, send out uh, copies of the presentation in the PDF format one-on-one uh, -on -one via email and comments can be considered up to that decision-making meeting. Thank you, Lori. Um, what's what's the decision of council? What, what's council like to see here? Uh, is that okay, uh, Councillor Bondi? Is that all right? Is that all right with the rest of council? Okay, uh, okay, everybody's in favor. Okay, thank you, council. So we can move we can move forward. We're going to post it on some website and this and also. Well, we'll do the recording. Yes. 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 Okay, so we'll continue. We'll continue on with the meeting then. Okay? And we'll post everything on our website. Thank you. Uh, where were we now? We were, uh, I think Rita, uh, Rita, if you want to, if you'd like to continue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so very quickly, for those of you who may be joining us through Zoom, we are here tonight to consider a rezoning application at 101 Poplar Bluff Drive to consider permitting a 104 square meter accessory building with a second story to accommodate a second dwelling unit. This meeting is just to take in public comments and to hear the proposal. No decision of council will be rendered tonight. That'll be rendered on September 21st. So leaving off um, or taking off where I, where I left off here, this is the site plan for the proposed structure, the accessory building with second dwelling unit. It is outlined in red and it is to be located to the rear of the property just north of the existing dwelling. Next slide, please. Here is a front elevation of the proposed structure the second dwelling unit would be located on the second story. Next slide, please. I have included some policy considerations for council and for the public tonight because it's important when rendering a decision on a zoning bylaw amendment. We can't render a decision on a zoning bylaw amendment if it's not permitted under the provincial policy statement and if it's not permitted under the town of Essex official plan. In 2019, there were considerable changes to the Planning Act. Most notably, the Planning Act, with reference to second dwelling units, now states that official plans must contain policies authorizing the use of additional residential units by authorizing use of two residential units in a building or structure ancillary to a detached house. So before the Planning Act was changed with respects to uh, Section 16.3, municipalities had an option of where to permit second dwelling units in their official plan, either in a detached house, within a detached house, such as what we currently permit under the Town of Essex zoning bylaw, or within an ancillary dwelling. So now the Planning Act has made it clear that we must permit them in either the building and um, the actual dwelling or in a building accessory to that dwelling. The Town of Essex official plan does permit second dwelling units in a building accessory to the main dwelling. Now keep in mind the official plan is different than the zoning bylaw. It sets policies whereas the zoning bylaw sets regulations. So when considering a zoning bylaw amendment, we have to ensure that this would be permitted under the official plan. Second dwelling units are permitted in a building accessory to the main dwelling subject to the availability of a municipal sanitary sewer connection for the second dwelling unit in compliance with the applicable provisions of the official plan and zoning bylaw, uh, bylaw 1350. So with respects to a second dwelling unit in a building accessory to the main dwelling, 
they, anybody who wishes to do this would have to apply for a site-specific zoning amendment, which is why we're here tonight. Also in 2020, the provincial policy statement, which is the leading statement on um, land use policies in the province of Ontario, there were some considerable changes which were presented to council back in May with respects to development in areas where services in terms of municipal services are not available. So with respects to municipal sewage services, for example, where they are not available, the PPS states that individual on-site sewage services may be used provided that site conditions are suitable for the long-term provision of such services with no negative impacts. So with respects um, to the Town of Essex official plan, yes, it does state that second dwelling units may be permitted in a detached structure subject to the availability of municipal sanitary sewer, which this property does not currently have, but these policies date back to 2009 when provincial policy were different respecting services. Next slide, please. Other considerations um, for council tonight, our zoning bylaw does speak to regulations concerning the total gross floor area for all combinations of accessory buildings on a single lot. The zoning bylaw for residential districts speaks to accessory buildings, any combination of such, cannot exceed 92 square meters, which is 1,000 square feet. As noted earlier in the presentation, the property does contain an existing 120 square foot accessory building. So in combination with the building that is proposed, the total gross floor area will exceed 92 square meters. The applicant is here tonight. He can speak a little bit more about whether he wants to keep the accessory structure or not. Um, that is up to him. However, it is a regulation that, you know, we must consider in any bylaw that we draft for this zoning bylaw amendment. Next slide, please. This application was circulated to agencies, both internal departments and external agencies. Um, we didn't receive any objections from internal departments and that includes infrastructure service, that includes our building division. We did receive one comment from the Essex Region Conservation Authority. They noted because of the, the treat area, there's always concern for the conservation of the natural heritage feature. My planning staff did attend to the property, took pictures, consulted with IRCA, um, and uh, the ultimate result was that no environmental impact assessment would be required to accompany the rezoning application. IRCA does know in their comments that they continue to reflect the need to have engineering assessments completed to support the proposed development application. And, and this is because the property is located in IRCA's regulated area. It is um, engineering assessments are required at the permitting stage. So it is not simply because the applicant is here tonight with a rezoning application that this engineering assessment is required. It's ultimately going to be required if he wishes to um, obtain a, a building permit. And finally, IRCA notes that with additional information and potential engineering costs that this location can be supported um, through an IRCA permit. So the proposed building can be supported through an IRCA permit. Next slide, please. We did circulate the application to everybody within 120 meters of the subject property and the map that's indicated on this slide, everything in yellow you see there are properties where um, we, we've directly sent out mail outs, uh, ident identifying the proposal, the time of the meeting, um, because these are the persons, these are the properties that are directly going to be affected um, by this rezoning application. We, however, did not receive any public comments as of Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Next slide, please. In terms of next steps, a report to council and the proposed bylaw, which we'll see at, in the next slide, will be prepared for council's decision at the September 21st regular council meeting. At this meeting, council can approve the application, they can deny the application, or they can choose to defer the decision to a later date if further information is required. 
If they choose to approve the application or deny the application, there's a 20 day appeal period which must be observed before the decision on the zoning bylaw amendment is final and binding. Next slide, please. And finally, here is the proposed bylaw passage. So as you'll see, it indicates the location of the property, 101 Poplar Bluff Drive, and it indicates additional permitted uses above and beyond what's already permitted. So one accessory building with a gross floor area of 104 square meters and second story subject to the regulations of subsection 14.1, that's the R11 district. So with respects to that passage, um, and any accessory building will still have to comply with those uh, setback regulations from a rear yard, front yard, side yard. Secondly, a second dwelling unit will be permitted within the accessory building. And finally, the combination of all accessory buildings on the lot shall be 115 square meters, 1,240 square feet. And this takes into account the accessory building that's currently existing. Next slide, please. I don't think there's anything more besides the comments from the Essex Region Conservation Authority. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rita. <clears throat> I'll open it up to the council. Is there any questions to Lori or Rita from council at this point? Okay, seeing none, I need a motion to accept the, uh, the report. I've got a question. Did I oh, you have a, go ahead, go ahead, councilor. Go ahead, councilor Vandenhoek. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, uh, I'd like to know. It says that uh, Erica wants an engineering assessment or an engineer. Yeah, an engineering assessment. Was such an assessment done on Erica's um, accessory building that they're constructing currently at the John R. Park Homestead? And also, uh, Ms. Jabour said, uh, "quote Proposed building can be supported through an Erca permit." Unquote. I'd like to know the definition of the verb can be supported. Um, I need that in plain English, what it means. Thank you. Uh, Lori or Rita, Rita or Lori, can you answer that? Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councilor Vander Dolan. In regards to ERCA's, uh, are you referring to the Tourism Information Center at the John R. Park Homestead? I think they call it a reception center. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know the details as to uh, whether an engineering report was required for uh, for that project, but can certainly share that information via email after this meeting. Uh, I, I, I am assuming that during the permitting uh, phase, which is currently uh, at this time currently, uh, that some uh, drawings would be required. I just don't know uh, offhand what is required. I, I bring this up because at the time we approved the John R. Park project, I expressed concern that um, Erka was allowing itself something to do something that wouldn't be allowed to ordinary ordinary mortals. So I bring this up, like we've got to, it's got to be consistent. Government has to uh, apply, uh, uh, obey the same rules that people do. So yeah. I, I just like to get that nailed down. Thanks. Sure. The John R. Park Homestead project was actually a permitted project, permitted by right. Uh, and the site plan agreement that we did enter into did spell out the requirements uh, for a permitting process not only from a building perspective, but also for stormwater management. So I can certainly share the details of uh, what that entails from an engineering uh, perspective. <clears throat> Thank you. And then, uh, uh, I will pass on the baton to Rita for the second question. For you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Laurie, to uh, Councillor Vander Dolan. Um, with respects to the, uh, the comments from Essex Region Conservation Authority, they simply state that an engineering assessment is, in these circumstances, it would be better submitted at the beginning of the application, so at the rezoning stage, even though it's something that they're going to need regardless, even if they didn't have to go through a rezoning, because there is a Planning Act application that's been triggered, it would have been better if they submitted an engineering assessment from the beginning. So, you know, their comments could adequately ref reflect the uh, feasibility of this proposal. Um, so without that, they, they can't really say yay or nay um, to whether, you know, this uh, building can be constructed to IRCA standards. I know with respects to the existing dwelling there, it's relatively new and the applicant had to undergo engineering assessment. 
Um, I think what IRCA is trying to do state is that engineering assessments, when done properly, I mean, they're going to be required, um, will allow this building to receive permission from IRCA. Thank you. Um, uh, any other questions? Uh, Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I like the idea of uh, additional dwelling units built like this. And I think, uh, I think we need to uh, investigate some more of these uh, according to our official plan review. Will detached units, can we do detached units like this without having them attached to a, gra to a garage? Excuse me. That's my first question. Could somebody do this without doing a garage as well? And also what, would, what is the minimum square footage for this this unit, the living in unit, not the garage floor. Through you, Mr. Chair, I can answer that. Um, with respects to what they can do right now with our current zoning bylaw regulations, second dwelling units are confined to the actual dwelling, but we haven't really established regulations for detached second dwelling units yet. Um, internally, we have set aside a date to meet and, and, and to discuss what those regulations are going to look like. And um, ultimately, we are going to present them to the public. We're going to present them to council. It's just that we don't have um, those regulations in, in front of us right now. Um, with respects to your second question, I think Mr. Gorski's on the line and he can speak to the total gross floor area for that second dwelling unit. Okay, um, first of all, we, we, uh, we need a motion to accept the presentation first, and then I'm going to go to uh, Mr. Gorski. So, for the presentation, I need a motion to accept the presentation. Uh, Councillor Bowman and Councillor Guerin, all in favor of that? Okay, that's carried, and I'm going to open it up now. Bernie, uh, when you're ready, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, your worship and, and councillors. Um, what is the question you want me to answer? I'm sorry, I, I was following it, but I, I, I don't understand the question precisely. Go ahead and ask the question again, please. Just through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Bur Mr. Uh, Gorski, what is the, the square footage of the apartment on top? Oh, the square footage of the apartment on top will be identical to the size of the uh, accessory building. So I believe that's 1120 square feet. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Garski, uh, Councillor Burbeek, go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, welcome, Mr. Gorski. Is this unit to be just used as a rental, a rental property, or are you looking to, uh, you know, use it as a, a B and B with, um, you know, people um, like a B and B or a, a, a vacation um, accessory, or is this to be just a, a another um, an, a rental? Um. No, actually, the, uh, there's no rental at all. Um, my plan is to, uh, at this time, if my family comes over from Western Canada, there are four people, we've only got one extra bedroom, and I would like to have a place for them, except I don't want to rent a B&B. And further, all, I'm, I'm 66 years old, and I'm looking into the future, and the... Um, uh, COVID-19 has kind of rattled me a little bit and I'm thinking that as I get older and I would like to have someone um, care for me, I don't want to go to an old folks home because right now people are dying in there from diseases and pandemics and, and I'm sure this isn't the last one we're going to have and I, I really hope it is but I, I kind of doubt it. So um, I'd like to have a, a place for someone to live if they're working for me taking care of me in my old age. Thank you, uh, Bern. Anybody else from council? Uh, Councillor Vandenholm, go ahead. 
Um, uh, welcome, Mr. Gorski. Uh, this question isn't for Mr. Gorski, actually, it's probably for staff, or, or maybe even uh, Councillor Bowman can answer this, but could someone explain to me why historically we're so opposed to these secondary units? I, I've been asked this many times over the years, and I've had my own conjecture, but I just wonder what, the, what like, there seems to be this, this intense animus against these second units, which makes sense in rural areas. I don't understand why we've been opposed to them. Who can answer that administration? Uh, Laurie, can you answer that? Sure, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Councillor Vander Dolan. I, I don't know if necessarily uh, we've been opposed. I think something from the province down to municipalities is something that's actually mandated. And so as Rita has described in her report and presentation, it is something that the province uh, is looking to uh, each municipality and an obligation to actually update our official plans to permit them detached by right. Uh, under the uh, new uh, More Homes and More Choices Act as well. It just pushes us just uh, even more uh, beyond the PPS. So it's something that um, I think and believe truly is, is should be supported. I just don't think that um, they've been, in, for, forgive me if I'm, I'm incorrect, that we've been opposed. Yeah, thanks, Ms. Chadwick. Uh, with all due respect to you, uh, actually municipalities have been angrily opposed to them for many years. Um, to the point where the Windsor Star just wrote a, a story, I think it was on page one, about a guy who was trying to build a secondary unit in his backyard under this new provincial um, mandate. The mandate was brought in because of our housing crisis. That's the right thing to do. But before you could not do this. I know people from years ago who tried to do it and were prevented, not just in, in, in Windsor, but out here in the county too, because it was, it was banned. And that's why the province had to force us to allow it. And I'm just wondering what is the, the reason, what the, the what's what's the opposition? I, I don't get it. I know now we're not opposed, but it still seems as though it's not of right. It's not easy. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. I, I think, Councillor, if I can just throw my two cents in, I, I think you're going to see more and more and more of this now coming. Uh, this is something that's uh, been in the making for a while. And I think council, we as a council, we talked about it. I think all the municipalities have got this on the table now. Uh, the province is uh, pretty well dictating to us to do it. And uh, I think as a council, we, sh uh, we should be very aggressive at this and start approving these. And uh, instead of going through all the, all the red tape, I, I mean, if it makes sense, uh, we have to approve these things. I mean, this is something uh, we have a, a housing shortage. We all know that, a very, very severe one. Uh, we have people living in cars. We have people living in backyards. Uh, this is something that uh, has to be done. So anyways, I, I thank you, Councillor Van Dolan, for your comments. Uh, anything else from Council? Uh, Councillor Bondi, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This goes back to the report that we asked for uh, early on in our term as a council, the April 2019 or so report on affordable housing, which unfortunately hasn't made it to administration's docket yet. But I think that this is one of the pieces, right? I think we need to look at um, things for how many bed and breakfasts do we have? How many Airbnbs do we have? I know Lakeshore is dealing with that. Um, I took a picture of affordable housing, posted it on my social media. I had two comments from residents in our municipality, one on the 12th concession and one at the end of uh, Snake Lane, saying that they looked at doing uh, a standalone detached additional dwelling and were not able to do it. So both of those households had to do, um, had to do a, a, a dwelling attached to their home, which makes it it's great for their use for the next 10 to 15 years, but coming down in the future, they're going to have this massive home. And I said, well, you could put your teenage kids or adult kids in there by then, but it's really um, not ideal, right? People do want to have uh, smaller, smaller units if they have the property. The one on the 12th concession, I drove by on the weekend. I took a picture of it. It's a large piece of property. I don't know why, and this was before uh, this time, right? This was uh, quite a few years ago, but it's something that I think, you know, we could revisit and we need to get on this. This is, this is definitely going to be a piece of the puzzle to solve the housing crisis. So I'm all for this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Guerin, go ahead. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so in Mr. Gorski's case, lots of property in a residential area um, doesn't look to be infringing on, on anyone's uh, other, uh, other properties around it. I'm just curious to, to either Ms. Chadwick or, or maybe Rita, what, what is the, um, we must base it on size of property or frontage of property when we take into consideration applications like this? What, what is the minimums? So if somebody lives in a, in a residential area, in a subdivision, and um, say has more than 30, 40, 50% of property still left to put a second building on, um, what, is, what is the measurement we go by? And I guess when we start getting into second stories, I think we have to be taking into consideration where we're going to be allowing these. Um, so just if I can get an answer on that and we'll go from there. Thank you. For you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Guerin, I, I can answer that question. So when we evaluate a zoning bylaw uh, amendment proposal, uh, our official plan actually stipulates a number of considerations we must make. One of the big one, big ones in this case is um, its impact on the neighborhood and its impact on our infrastructure. So with respects to this property, they will have to provide um, private septic uh, services to service the property with sanitary. And that's something that's dealt with at the building permit stage. Again, the size of the lot is a lot bigger than what you would normally see in a residential district. This is almost, almost three acres. A normal residential lot is 50 by 100. In terms of the, the neighborhood, a lot of the residential development is confined to the other side of the road on the east side. Um, and just north of it is a golf course and a, a large agricultural property. So in terms of setbacks, being able to satisfy setbacks and lot coverage, things that would normally affect privacy and uh, stormwater runoff, um, this property would be able to support a development of this scale. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rita. Anybody else? Okay, so I, I, did I have a mover to accept this uh, presentation? Was there a mover and a seconder? Okay, all in favor. All in favor of the presentation? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rita and Lori. Uh, we'll move right into, um, I guess, correspondence uh, because we already uh, heard from Mr. Gorski, unless he has something else to say. But, uh, Bernard, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I'm fine. I think, I think you covered okay. everything. And thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Bernard. And um, we'll go into correspondence and uh, the only one we have is from the Essex Region Conservation Authority. So can I have a mover to receive that, please? Uh, Councillor Vandendol and Councillor Verbeek, all in favor? It's carried and we'll uh, go right into adjournment. I need a motion to adjourn. Uh, Councillor Garen and Councillor Bowman, all in favor? Thank you, Council. I'll see you in a, in a bit for our meeting. Thank you.